Uh, we want to try to move forward here in our show, an important story that, well, I guess it did get some coverage, a fair amount of story, a uh, fair amount of coverage, and that is uh, the recent election in Senegal that took place this past Sunday, which was, uh, as the lower third there says, a game-changing election uh, for Senegal. Some big uh, big potential uh, outcomes here from this election. A lot of jubilation on the streets, which, of course, if you have the opportunity to go to some of our social media, you can see that we have shared some videos that were coming out there from Sunday night with you know thousands of people taking to the streets. So to get more into what's happening in Senegal, why the election has uh, you know seems like such an inflection point, we are very, very honored to be joined here by Amzat Bukhari Yabara, who's a historian, an author, and the president of the Pan-African League, Emoja. Amzat, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. Well, it's really an honor to have you here. And, you know, maybe just to give some context for people who, who don't know as much, haven't been following Senegal, uh, you know, who won the election and why is that has something that has caused such mass jubilation, it seems, amongst especially a lot of young people? Yes, um, Basirou Diomaifai won the election. He was in jail uh, 12, years, uh, 12 days ago. So he was released just 10 days before the election, after 11 months in prison. And um, the real candidate of uh, the Senegalese people was Ousmane Sonko, who is uh, his, uh, a friend from the same political party, the African Patriots of Senegal. But he was barred from presenting at the election. What you need to know is that the incumbent uh, president, Macky Sall, did not want to leave office. So the election was supposed to be held in February, but it was uh, cancelled and delayed. And then you had uh, a mass protest, international protest against this decision. And finally, the election took place uh, on Sunday, uh, last Sunday, and uh, Jomai Fai uh, won with uh, 57% of uh, the vote against Tamaduba, who was a candidate from the ruling administration. And uh, this is really important because Senegal is um, uh, an example of uh, democracy in West Africa. And uh, since three years, we have many demonstrations, we have many crises in this country. Uh, many people have been killed by the political repression of the former uh, government by Macky Sall. And uh, we were afraid that this election uh, will turn into a, a nightmare, but everything went okay. And uh, the people massively choose uh, Jumai Fai. Jumai Fai is only 44 years old. He's the youngest president in the history of Senegal. Uh, he was uh, quite unknown since uh, t t 10 days, but he's also a member of the African Patriots of Senegal, a founding member of this, uh, of this political party, a senior officer of this political party and is now in charge of uh, the destiny of uh, Senegal, uh, that is a very strategic country in West Africa, and more strategic regarding what is happening today in Sahel. Well, I think it's super interesting that he was also at some point put in detention himself. The leader of his party was had been imprisoned. Um, and now that he has won this election, He's talking about some really important stuff. He's promised to restore uh, the country's institutions. He wants to renegotiate mining and energy contracts and work towards uh, monetary reform, potentially, uh, which potentially includes a new currency. So can you talk a bit about that? What is he like? Wh why is he popular enough to win an election? Uh, and why are these policies that he's promising to pursue in particular popular among uh, people after so many years of these mass demonstrations that you're talking about? Yeah, wh what you need to know is that uh, Senegal is uh, the oldest French colony in Africa since the 17th century, and it became independent in 1960, but it was a false independence. The, the French interest remained in Senegal, and France is the first economic partner of Senegal, and uh, in the last year, we have a movement named France Dégage, France Get Out, uh, which rose amongst the youth. And uh, most of the youth in Senegal is unemployed and they want economic justice. Uh, they consider that uh, the business-friendly policies of the former government 
uh, was not uh, for the benefit of the people, and they want to change this situation. So there was a mass of uh, uh, disenchanted youth and also middle-class entrepreneurs who supported uh, the candidacy of, uh, of um, Jumai Fai, and they want to renegotiate everything concerning the economic system. Uh, another big issue is that Senegal is uh, about to become an oil producer country, and the issue of oil is very uh, strategic uh, because it is um, a, a large amount of money, and the former government of Macky Sall, his policy was to attract foreign investment and to neglect uh, local investment. And uh, the policy of Dumai Fai and the African Patriots of Senegal uh, is to uh, implement uh, economic patriotism and to um, protect the interest of the people of Senegal. So this is a radical change concerning uh, political practices. He wants to fight corruption. Uh, he wants to, uh, to, uh, to change uh, the country's economic orientation. And the uh, hope for uh, youth is that Senegal uh, could benefit to uh, Senegalese youth. So we have a strong change uh, in the mindset uh, of uh, the political leader. And one thing quite important is is, um, is a young leader. So he, uh, he also spent 11 months in jail. So he know what uh, it means to struggle. Uh, it know what it means to struggle for dignity, and uh, many youth uh, recognize themselves uh, um, in the vision of uh, the African Patriots of Senegal and uh, the candidacy of um, uh, Diomar Dio, Dio, Dio uh, So this election is a um, victory for uh, the Senegalese youth uh, who struggle for many years to have a change of system and now the challenge for the new president is to uh, really change the system. And uh, we can say that everything is starting now with this election, and uh, we need to support change in Senegal. You know, one of the questions, and you alluded to this earlier, is is how is this connected to some of what we've seen across the Sahel? I mean, obviously, it's different in many ways because it was the the electoral uh, route here which prevailed. But it seems similar themes around, uh, you know, the neocolonial influence of France, the desire for more development, addressing the issues of the youth. I mean, where would you place what's happening in Senegal in the broader context of what's happening in the Sahel in West Africa? Uh, Senegal is seen as a stable country. Uh, it's uh, seen as a very important place concerning geopolitical issues. You have many uh, UN headquarters uh, building in Dakar. Dakar is an international city, so you have a, a, a US influence in, in Senegal. You have also French interest in Senegal, and uh, the stake is that Senegal contributes to stabilize the Western uh, Africa uh, area. And um, now the fact that we have an anti-establishment leader at the head of Senegal uh, could be seen as a threat for foreign interests. So we have this situation that is quite interesting because, uh, as you mentioned, uh, Diomar Fai was elected. He is not uh, coming from a military coup, but he's also the proof that we can change the situation through democratic um, democratic process, so uh, his uh, ambition is to um, change the ECOWAS, the economic community of West African states, uh, from which uh, Burkina Faso, Mali, and Niger decided to withdraw. So, what is going on right now is a new um, uh, a new um, balance of power in West Africa and the possibility from Senegal to start a new political revolution all over in West Africa. Because I think that uh, this example of uh, Jomar Fai winning the election in Senegal could lead to other change in other African countries on the political issue. And concerning uh, the position of Senegal is to stand with uh, the people of Mali, Nafaso, and Niger. So I think that Senegal may be um, will be probably uh, change the balance of power uh, inside uh, the ECOWAS uh, institution uh, for the benefit of the people and for the benefit of uh, uh, the Sahelian countries. 
Uh, indeed. And, you know, I think that when it comes to pushing back against U.S. empire and the imperialist policies of its allies like France uh, across West Africa, what we see, what we've seen is there's, you know, the, the global North countries will very quickly be willing to come together to um, intervene in whatever way they can uh, and to block any attempt to for any country in the region to pursue a policy independent of Western interests uh, and one that actually uh, is in the interest of its own people. And so for that, I, I'm wondering if there is a conversation or any fear about a potential imperialist backlash, if you will. Uh, and as a result, is there a conversation about, you know, sort of treading lightly uh, when it comes to how Senegal is going to, you know, be in solidarity with with the neighboring countries uh, and push back against French colonialism and the imperialist policies of a country like the U.S.? Uh, the ideological position of um, the new president of Senegal is uh, left-wing pan-Africanism. Uh, so he's clearly on uh, anti-capitalist uh, basis. Um, uh, can you hear me? Oh. Yes. Oh, yes. Can you, yeah. Can you hear us? Yeah. Okay. Uh, he, okay. He's clearly, uh, he, he really wants to, um, uh, to weed out corruption. Uh, he really wants to, to get away from French colonial relics. So, uh, the exit from uh, the French currency, uh, the CFA, uh, is on the way, probably. But uh, indeed, it is different to um, be in the opposition and to be in power. So in his first statement, he explained that the foreign uh, partners of Senegal uh, did not have to be worried that uh, Senegal will uh, uh, respect all his uh, agreements. But uh, in reality, he wants uh, that the other countries respect Senegal. So I think that the balance of power is changing because Senegal is not alone. There are other countries in Africa who are starting to resist to foreign imperialism, to US and French imperialism. We can speak of Niger, who uh, decide to expel uh, the US military drone bases in Niger. So we have um, a connection uh, in different parts of Africa. But I think that the case of Senegal is a little bit different because they said from the beginning that they did not want to, to trade with Russia. They want to be independent. They want to choose their partners. And I think that this, uh, this discourse, this narrative, uh, is what we need to hear in Africa. Uh, another issue is the fact that Senegal has a, a huge diaspora in, in France, in the US, and I think that uh, this diaspora should be politicized to understand the role that she could play uh, in the US, in France, in uh, uh, every country where she is, uh, to uh, explain the political position of Senegal today. So uh, we are entering in a new um, geopolitical situation, and I think that this Senegal's game-changing election is... Uh, uh, the beginning uh, of a political revolution inside Senegal and Africa, but also in the relation between Africa and the rest of the world, uh, including the foreign former colonial powers and imperialist power of France and the U.S., Mm -hmm. Well, it's going to be a lot to watch here. Very interesting, a very hopeful election, I have to say. And we are very, very honored, Amzat Bukhari Yobara, that you would give us some of your time and join us on the Freedom Side. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.